Okay guys, uh, this is more on related rates with implicit differentiation with the respect to time. So expanded cases of related rates. So here we're going to have a fish being reeled in. Uh, we're going to have some, uh, some other ones here. I forgot. Oh, and the lighthouse one, the infamous lighthouse one. Okay, so a street lamp in the shadow. So, and this is in, in every calculus book in one form or another, you guys. A six foot man, always six feet tall, is walking away from the street, it seems like. Street light that's uh, 20 feet high at a rate of uh, 5 feet per second. So he's walking away at a rate of 5 feet per second. At what rate is the tip of his shadow moving when he is 24 feet from the light post? And at what rate is the length of his shadow increasing? Okay, so it's asking two things right here. All right, so there's my picture right there. The lamp post is is 20 feet high and he's six feet tall all right so um, what I'm gonna do is is um, uh, call this piece um, uh, X and I think I called that piece Y did I do that I did yeah and since he's walking away from the lamp post then his DX his related rate away from it is five feet per second I forgot to put the feet per second on there all right, so uh, I have two right triangles. You see those two right triangles there? Well, they're similar to each other, you guys, because these angles are equal right here, and they both have right angles, so they're similar by angle-angle similarity. You remember that in geometry? And then I can say 20 is to 6 as x plus y is to y. Okay, so when I do that, I have that proportion, and proportions you can cross-multiply, so if you cross-multiply, and, and uh, subtract off 6y from both sides, and then divide both sides by 2. There's my equation relating x and y right there, and I got that from the similar triangles. So when I differentiate that, I'm going to get 7dy equals 3dx. Okay, now I don't know what um, uh, dy is, but I do know what dx is. dx is 5. So what I'm going to do is find the length of the uh, the length of a shadow increasing. So the rate of is the length of the shadow increasing is my dy. So I'm going to find that first. All right. So when I plug in uh, five right there because dx equals five, I get dy to be 15 sevenths feet per second. Okay, which is like 2.14 something if I if I remember right. Okay, so there's the second part of the answer right there. So uh, the length of a shadow is increasing at a rate of 15 sevenths feet per second. So about 2.14 feet per second. All right, now, as the shadow is increasing a amount, and he's walking at this amount, then this tip of the shadow is moving at the amount of x plus y, or, yeah, I'm sorry, dx plus dy. So I just add those related rates, dx and dy, together, and I find out that the tip of his shadow is moving at the rate of 57 uh, feet per second, okay, which is 7 point something. All right. Okay, so a boy launches his toy rocket 15 feet away with his remote control. The toy rocket gains an altitude, so it's going up at a rate of 2.5 feet per second. Find the rate at which the rocket of angle of elevation is changing when the rocket has gained an altitude of 15 feet. Okay, so there's my rocket going up. I found this on Google, a little rocket ship. Okay, and then so uh, I let that be height right there, and, and we know that he's 15 feet away, so that's constant. And this is also constant, that rocket's going up at 2.5 feet per second. Okay, now the, an equation that relates all of this, you guys, is my uh, sine-cosine tangent ratios, and on this one it's a tangent ratio. The tangent of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, I'm sorry, over adjacent. So h over 15 equals the tangent of theta. Okay, and then when I uh, differentiate that, this is going to be the uh, this is going to be uh, secant squared of theta d theta equals um, uh, uh, dh over 15. Oops, there goes my phone buzzing right there. All right, so um, now I don't know what theta is yet. I'll get it in just a second. I do know what d theta is, and I'm looking for dh right there. Uh, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm looking for d theta right there. I know what dh is right there. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is, uh, let's see, um, I plugged uh, the 2.5 in right there, and we're looking for uh, uh, d theta, but we need to know uh, the angle the angle itself. Okay, now how I'm going to get the angle itself is by plugging in uh, where he's 15 feet away. Okay, when he's 15 feet away and the rocket is 15 feet up, actually I already knew he's 15 feet away. So, but when it's the rocket's 15 feet up, I have an isosceles triangle right here, an isosceles right triangle, which means that has to be 45, and that has to be 45, it's a 45, 45, 90. 
Now I put it in, in terms of radians right there because we're going to have an angle or an answer in, in radians per second right here. So I'm going to plug in um, uh, pi over 4 for this right here. Or I'm sorry, for this angle right here. Okay, so I know the cosine of pi over 4 is, uh, is uh, root 2 over 2. So that means the secant of pi over 4 is um, just the square root of 2. So the square root of 2 squared, uh, d theta. Now I changed uh, 2.5 to 5 halves, you guys, so I can go ahead and, you know, that's easier for me to reduce that. I don't like having decimals inside of fractions. Um, uh, it's kind of mathematically tacky. So I just changed 2.5 to 5 halves. There's my 2.5 right there. And then 5 goes into 15 three times. So this is actually 1 sixth right here. Okay, over here I get 2 d theta because root 2 squared is, is 2. All right. So I get d theta to be 1 12, okay? And that's what I'm looking for is d theta. So let's put it in the context. The angle of elevation uh, is changing 1 12th of a radian per second. All right, I believe I have one more. Okay, a fish is being reeled in at a rate of 1 foot per second from a point 10 feet above the water. Okay, at what rate is the angle between the line and the water changing when there is a total of 25 feet of line out, okay? So this person's 10 feet above the water. I couldn't find a nice picture of a guy fishing. I wish I could have. And uh, I know that uh, uh, that he's reeling this in at one foot per second. You guys know why it's negative, right? Because the string's getting shorter and shorter and shorter, so it's negative. Okay, and he's 10 feet above right there. All right, and we're looking for uh, d theta right there. So uh, I'm going to use, uh, looks like uh, sine cosine tangent again. So the sine of this angle is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, so 10 over x, okay, and then which is 10x to the negative 1, all right, and then when I differentiate that, you guys, the uh, derivative of sine is cosine, uh, d theta right there, equals, and then derivative of 10x to the negative 1 is negative 10x to the negative 2, okay. Now when x is 25, uh, I get this right triangle right here, okay? So now I can uh, uh, I can figure out uh, theta with this right triangle right here uh, because um, uh, 25 squared is 625, 10 squared is 100, 625 minus 100 is 525, so this is the square root of 525. Okay, a little Pythagorean theorem for you right there. All right, so now I have this right triangle with the sides, and I need the cosine of theta. The cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, okay? So it's uh, square root of 525 over 25. All right, so this square root of 525 over 25 is going to go right there. Okay, looking for d theta. I know what dx is. It's negative 1. And now I know what x is. It's 25. And I'm going to put this, uh, this x to the negative 2 on the bottom to make it x to the positive 2. So I think I have, yeah, here's my x to the positive 2 on the bottom right here. Okay, so now it's just number crunching time, you guys. So I skipped all that number crunching time, and I got uh, my d, d theta to be about 0.017 radians per second. Okay, and if you're in my calculus class, I would assign that as your homework.